This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jeremy Wolf. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Wolf. And today I'm joined by Lindsay Glasscock. Lindsay is a realtor with Remax Prestige Realty. And I got to say, I've, I've done quite a few interviews with realtors, as you know, Lindsay. And mm-hmm. I always enjoy sitting down and hearing perspectives from various realtors because we live in such a crazy market and it's always interesting to hear what everybody has to say. So, Lindsay, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. Uh, as you know, I am a listener, so I'm very happy to be here. So thanks again. Love it. Love it. Thank you for your support. We appreciate it. And well, let's let's get right into this. Everybody knows what a realtor does, but we don't know what Lindsay does. Please tell us a little bit about your organization, what you do through Remax and specifically Prestige Realty. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, Jeremy, thanks again, like I said, for having me. And yes, everybody does know what a real estate agent does, but I specifically, uh, you know, I'm Lindsay Glasscock. I am born and raised here in South Florida. So I do have, you know, the expertise of being a local real estate agent and I specialize in residential. I've dabbled in commercial, but I do stick to what I know best, which is residential. Um, And I do focus in Broward County. I do go all the way to Palm Beach. However, I specialize here in West Broward County primarily. So Davie, Cooper City, Weston, you know, all of that. Um, I will also say I'm a designated uh, buyer, accredited buyer representative. Say that five times fast. Designated accredited buyer representative? Uh, accredited buyer representative. Accredited buyer representative. Accredited exactly. buyer representative. Accredited buyer. No, I'm done. Continue. Exactly. Please. Right. So I am an accredited buyer representative. So that does give a little sense of security for buyers, knowing that I have taken the extra steps to get educated to ensure a smooth and stress free closing. Uh, I believe that also helps when I am working with sellers as well. And then, of course, I'm a real estate negotiation expert certified. So when you work with me, you do have a certified uh, negotiation expert in your corner, and I'm ready to tackle whatever obstacles come up. Okay, cool. So two things there. I'm trying to write it down so I could remember. But anyway, so accredited buyer represents whatever. What 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 goes into that, right? What other education is required to become an accredited buyer uh, representative? And then the other thing, certificate, ne- certified negotiator. Too many words today. It's right. A lot of of week. I can't process all this. Yeah. So, so talk about the accredited buyer, what goes into that, and then we'll get into the, the, the certified negotiator status. Absolutely. So both of them are additional education courses that are either at least, you know, two days to could be a week, could be months long processes. And basically it's just taking the additional step to uh, grow relationships. It's also, you know, meeting title people out there, mortgage lenders, uh, learning the whole process throughout, you know, start to finish of what a buyer will need, what a buyer will see throughout the process, you know, so it's really just getting a better understanding for myself and for the buyers and the clients that I get to work with. Um, I fully have, you know, the A to Z understanding. And then, yes. And then with the real estate um, negotiation expert, it's a similar thing. So it is also a course that you had to take. You have to take an exam at the end. And it's basically just trying to sharpen your skills and hone in on the different personalities that we work with and how to better get everybody's goals, you know, successfully met into the end table. Because at the end of the day, that is what we all want, a closed transaction, you know, both parties happy. So, you know, with these two accreditations, I feel as though I'm able to do that a little bit better. I'm surprised that none of the other realtors I've spoken to, because like I said, I've spoken with quite a few, have mentioned these designations. Are these common amongst the the industry or because I know there's in real estate, there's a lot of realtors out there and there's people that do this like professionally for a career and there's people that do it freelance part time and everything in the middle. Do you find that amongst the 
professionals, a lot of them are taking these classes and are involved in these types of training, additional training? Well, so I, I will say, you know, just with the craziness of the market right now, there's, and like you said, there's so many realtors, especially just in South Florida alone. I will say I am a full-time realtor. So what I do is try to get these accreditations and the education because I want to know how to best serve my clients. Um, I will say with some of the craziness that we're hearing right now with lawsuits and all of that without going into it, of course, I think, you know, realtors really do need to take the time to educate themselves, set themselves apart. Um, yes, they have been a around these accreditations. However, I think, you know, being in South Florida, we've been very lucky, us realtors, um, that we didn't have to necessarily set ourselves apart or know everything. But it is getting into a tougher market. We are, you know, the, the strong will survive. So if you're not educated, unfortunately, you will not last. So that is my one thing. I'm trying to just get as educated as I can uh, so that I can serve, you know, my clients better. That's really what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. You got to do something to separate yourself from the rest of the pack. And obviously, additional training and education is going to help you stand out. And like you mentioned before, having having a network in place of trusted title companies, trusted mortgage brokers, interior designers, all these different industries yeah. that are ancillary to what you do. It's, it's so nice to have people that you trust around you. So when you do work with a client, they don't have to want for anything, right? You could just kind of hook them up and connect them with people that are going to exactly. have their best interest in mind. Yeah, exactly. I kind of say I'm like a one stop shop with me. You know, it is just me, but I am with Remax Prestige Realty and they have five offices alone throughout Broward and Palm Beach. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm with a plethora of agents. And then on, on the side of that, I have, you know, my preferred title, my preferred attorneys, uh, interior designers, you know, from A to Z, like I said, so it is always good to not only have the education, but to have the whole team behind you. So Lindsay, what's the backstory? How did you get into the real estate game? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, so it's a funny story. I always say it was kind of inevitable for me to end up in real estate. I am a third generation realtor. So my grandparents were in real estate. My aunts and uncles were in real estate. Um, and so real estate's always kind of been a topic in the household for mine. And um, so my mom always made the joke, you know, I don't care what you do. If you want to do real estate, that's fine. But you will have to get a college degree. I want you to really fall back on the education. So I did one better. I got her, I got two college degrees. So I have a degree in business management and business marketing. So both of those degrees I you know do use in my day to day with real estate. Uh, I did graduate, obviously, college and I went into marketing at first. I love marketing. It is a passion of mine, but I kind of decided let's combine my two passions, real estate and marketing, and just go full throttle into real estate. And so here I am. So I always joke, it's in my DNA. I was bound to end up here. It was just when, when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> too funny, too funny. So what are some, well, then let me ask, I got to ask the question now. Yes. And then we'll tie that into the whole myth, misconceptions. Every realtor, as we know, I always ask you to pull out your magical crystal ball, mm -hmm. polish it up, shine it. Where are we at? What's going on with the market? Not obviously this is a fluctuate. This is a project that fluctuates over time. I've been doing this now for probably close to a year on the podcast. So things have mm -hmm. changed. Where are we at today? March 14th, 2024. What's going on in South Florida with the market? Where are we going in the future? Yeah. So I've definitely doing a lot of readings of 2024 predictions and where we're headed, I would say, you know, my biggest thing I'm screaming from the rooftops is for my buyers who are on the sidelines, you know, stop waiting. If you know you love this home in front of you and you can currently and for the foreseeable future afford it because I never want anybody beyond their means. Now is the if time. You, if you can afford it, now is the time. Yeah. Because rates continue to get pushed back on when they're going to come down. You know, originally it was supposed to be January. Then it was supposed to be March. Then it was May. Now we're looking at hopefully June. So I don't know. Again, if I had a crystal ball, I'd be a very rich woman. Um, but we don't know when it's going to happen. So instead of waiting for, you know, something else, 
have your controllables that you can control and act on it because the house is either not going to be there, it's going to be up in price, you're going to have competition, um, and so on. So really, again, my biggest thing is if you can afford it now and you love it, jump on it because it will not be around. Yeah, trying to time the market is just impossible. Unless you have some some kind of inside information that you shouldn't have. It's just like you yes, said. And I honestly it, want that insider information. So. <laughs> but yeah, and, and like you said, the time is when you find, especially if you're looking for your your home, right? That you're going to live in. That's a place you're going to stay at. Right? That's tied so emotionally into your state of being, right? When you find the right house, as mm -hmm. long as you can afford it, don't worry about anything else. Get into that house. And then if interest rates are high now, you could always refinance later. But exactly. it's certainly optimal to renting and paying somebody else's mortgage for a long period of time in, in most cases, right? Obviously. Exactly. And if you're able scenarios. to run those, you know, get with an experienced lender who can run you those numbers, they're happy to do so. I've never met a lender who's like, no, I don't want to <laughs> tell you how much your monthly payments are going to be. You know, people are scared yeah. to ask. Don't be. Say, this is what I want to spend. Here are three homes. What am I looking at here? So you have an understanding of, you know, hey, is this going to push me a little too much outside my comfort zone? Or, you know, I can afford this and I really do want to be in this school zone before August and I really do need this and I have this, you know, there's always going to be a demand in South Florida. We live in South Florida. So, it is what it is. If you can jump on it while you can, I absolutely think you should. I mean, we're hearing there's going to be the floodgates of inventory. And I'm, you know, I do think there will be inventory coming out. I don't believe it's going to be the floodgates everybody expects it to be. So I'm really honing in on if you're finding the inventory that you love or like enough, absolutely uh, purchase it. And then, like you're saying, refinance in the future. Or, hey, you'll have some equity in that home, and then you sell. The whis whispers of the floodgates opening, floodgates of inventory opening. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Just just little whispers. Probably yes, not little. Happen, but I'm going to time, Lindsay, I'm going to time it just right. I'm, I'm getting all these little pieces from everybody, and I'm putting it together into a big puzzle, and I'm just going to have yeah. the, the master code to unlock the entire market and make a fortune. Well, when you do, like I said, I'll share you know. that yeah, with absolutely. me, please. I will say <laughs> we're, we're hearing more potentially uh, more foreclosures because that has been very low and very quiet for some time. I'm hearing whispers about that. Again, not 100% sure. If I had a crystal ball, I wouldn't be here. But I do think we will see maybe more of that. But again, in South Florida, we'll see the spring market, of course, with more inventory, but we are still very limited, especially just being with the demand that we have here in South Florida. We'll always have that. So after I master my real estate investing prowess, I'm going to move over to the crypto scene and figure out how to how to time the crypto market and buy a bunch uh, of Bitcoin. How's that sound? Per, please. And teach me because I <laughs> that is something the, I don't even touch. The yo -yo, The yo-yo is real. That's yeah. all I can say about crypto. The yo-yo is real. All right, cool. So enough talk about work. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself. What do you like to do for fun when you're not working? I know you said you grew up here in South Florida. So you're a South Florida girl. Tell us a little bit about your family and what you like to do for fun. Absolutely. So I have been very lucky. I just came back from some recent trips. So I have been, Ooh, you know, taking the, yes, trips, taking trips the time to travel a little tanner than usual. Um, I went, I had a wedding in New Orleans for a good girlfriend of mine. In the so, bayou, huh? the yes, I was in the bayou. Wedding. Does she what? live there? Did she lives down there, I guess, or she had a destination <laughs> wedding in New Orleans? What a destination wedding, Ooh, yes. Like yes, it. yes, yes. So it was super fun. Um, it was a bunch of college friends too. So we hadn't seen each other for a while. So it was just so much fun. Still, honestly, you know, come back from it. I'm like, I may have left my brain cells in New Orleans. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> where'd, you, where'd you guys go to school? Where'd you go to college? Well, I went to college in Florida Gulf Coast uh, okay. at GCU in uh, West Florida. Okay. But she was my roommate all four years. And then funny enough, one year we did do a spring break in New Orleans. I'm like, I don't think we should ever be allowed back to New Orleans, okay, after our spring break. <laughs> 
Um, but Hurricane, yeah. Hurricanes and hand grenades. Let's yes. Go. Yes. Literally. I don't think no, I ever I'm, I'm done either. with that. Yeah. I can't even smell like a fruity drink like that again. Like I'm done. <laughs> um, and then I did just go on a nice relaxing uh, family cruise. So that was very nice. Um, so, you know, just taking the time to hang out with my family, honestly, be connected with them, enjoy time. Also, I'm a huge uh, Panthers fan. So the Panthers, Florida Panthers have been killing it. And, you know, they're always fun to watch the games. I live very close to the stadium. So I love to go Tuesdays, Thursdays usually. Um, and then that's pretty much it. I hang out with my dogs or I'm just relaxing. I love to read, uh, but pretty, pretty simple. Just trying to relax as much as I can right now. What kind of dogs? Yeah. I have a multi poo. So a multi, a multi poo. Yes. Love it. Is a little devil. And then I have a golden retriever who is an angel. So I have a devil and an angel that definitely give me a run for my money. So I don't need any kids right now. I'm good with my two, my two pets. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I have two kids. I love them to death, but you could you could have them. I'll keep the dog. I'll trade you for the yeah. dog. Joking, always, joking, joking. Yeah, I, I love them half the time. The other the other half the time, I want to kill them. No, I love them joking. when they're not asking for money, right? <laughs> uh, I, I I gotta say, I, I love dogs. I'm so happy. I have a little guy. Uh, he's a little terrier mini pin mixture mutt. Picked him up rescue. Oh, three, I love three that. years back. And they just opened a new dog park in Cooper City. And it's literally right down the road from where I live. So it's it's like walking distance. About I think where it's a walk right in to the Cooper road. City? It's Flamingo Park. You know where Park Avenue Gymnastics is? Mm -hmm. Right across the street from there, there was okay. a little tiny park. And they the city put a dog park there. It's fantastic. That's awesome. I usually go to Happy Tales in Plantation. Ah. Yes, that's what I was asking. It's a really nice park and they have um, Doggy Palooza. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but every once in a while they'll have food trucks, you know, vendors, the whole nine yards. It's so fun. So I'll, I'll bring my golden. I don't bring my multi-poo. <laughs> He's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. So before we wrap up here, Lindsay, leave us with one thing the one thing that you'd like for our listeners to know about your business? Absolutely. Well, the one thing, again, I think I've kind of mentioned it, but really when you work with me, I will go above and beyond to ensure that one, you are happy, but you're stress-free. You understand the process from A to Z, and we get you to the closing table, regardless if you're buying or selling. Um, I'm here to work with you as a partner, to communicate the whole process with you. Uh, but really, I'm here to hold your hand. And I have done everything from therapy, cleaning lady, you know, I've done it all. I'm here to figure it out with you so that we can get, again, the end goal to whatever property of a purchase or a buy. And then, like I said, I do have a team with me. So I'm happy to help. My team is happy to help and we will get whatever you need done and you can always rely on us. So, you know, we're here to help and we want everybody to be able to get into the home of their dreams at the end. So for anyone out there that's listening, that is looking for a new home, that would like a quality realtor to work with, that has some questions, how could they reach you? Let us know how we could learn more. Yeah, absolutely. So um, of course, you can visit my website, lindsayglasscock.com. So it is exactly how it's spelled, Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, and then Glasscock, G-L-A-S-S-C-O-C-K, uh, .com. And then, of course, you can find me on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Lindsay Glasscock underscore. Um, I'd love for a follow and I'll absolutely follow back and, you know, feel free to DM me any questions. You know, I'm always here to help. Perfect. We will link in the description to all of your contact information. Lindsay, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate it. That's our pleasure. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in and we will catch everyone next time. Take care. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast, Cooper City. To nominate your favorite local business to be featured on the show, go to gnpcoopercity.com. That's gnpcoopercity.com or call 
954-231-3170. 